We're going to go ahead and uh, get started this morning. We'd like to welcome everyone here. Uh, this is kind of a combined event. We have three intersecting things going on today, which we think uh, all deserve to be celebrated and commemorated uh, together. We have uh, National Start by Believing Day and a proclamation associated with that. We also have new legislation that has just been enacted uh, that will provide recourse for certain victims of sexual assault to have uh, their uh, decision whether or not to prosecute uh, be reviewed. And we also have a court case involving Jane Doe 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so all of those different events are coming together today, and you'll hear from speakers uh, connected with each of those. So uh, I believe our first speaker is Ms. Romero. Whoa. Hi, I'm State Representative Angela Romero, and in 2015, well, 2014, I was approached by then Detective Justin Boardman and a Julie Valentine, a professor up at BYU who specialized in sexual assault, and Holly Mullen at the time, who was the um, executive director of Rape Recovery Center. They introduced me to a national campaign called Start by Believing. And at the time, I had been running legislation on child sex abuse and sexual assault and was, able, was successfully able to pass it through the Utah legislature, so I agreed to take on this task. So in 2015, the Utah State Legislature passed a resolution called Start by Believing Day. And so now, from this day forward, the first Wednesday in April is Start by Believing Day. And I approached Mayor Biskuski about declaring Salt Lake City a Start by Believing Day. And I'm going to have Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Selig um, share that proclamation with you. Thank you, Representative, and thank you for all your hard work, tenacious work in this area. I'll be reading the proclamation on behalf of Mayor Biskupski today. Uh, she sends her regrets. She is very, very ill. This is an issue, however, that she has a lot of passion about, cares a lot about. I am proud to be part of a Start by Believing City. Um, I am proud that we support survivors, and I am very proud that we support law enforcement practices that embody Start by Believing principles. Whereas the Utah Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice's Rape in 2007 study found that one in three Utah women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime which is higher than the national average for sexual assault crimes. And whereas, according to Rape in Utah 2007, only 12% of sexual assaults are reported to law enforcement, which is lower than the national average for reporting sexual assault crimes. Whereas, the Federal Bureau of Investigation Uniform Crime Reports indicate that Utah has a higher rate of forcible rape than the national average since 1991. And whereas research by the Utah Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice in 2007 and a United States Senate subcommittee 2010 hearing on crime and drugs indicate that one of the most common reasons victims of sexual assault do not report the crime is a fear of not being believed and being blamed for the attack. And whereas national research has shown that false reports of sexual assault are very rare and no more common than false reports of other crimes. And whereas sexual assault is a violent crime and has devastating health, safety, and financial costs for every person in Utah, be them a victim, a survivor, or a family member, loved one, friend, neighbor, or coworker of a victim. And whereas multiple research studies indicate that negative social reactions received by victims when they disclose sexual assault are associated with increased psychological problems following, following sexual assault. And whereas End Violence Against Women International has developed a public awareness program entitled Start by Believing, a message that in part confronts the reality that many victims do not receive the support they need when they do report the crime. Whereas the governor of the state of Utah signed a concurrent resolution in 2015 designating the first Wednesday in April as Start by Believing Day in Utah, 
and encouraging local governments and private business organizations around the state to endorse the Start By Believing campaign. Whereas, if victims of sexual assault are believed and supported, they will heal more quickly and completely, improving the health and safety of the people of Salt Lake City in Utah. Now, therefore, Jacqueline Biskupski, Mayor of Salt Lake City, does hereby proclaim Salt Lake City to be a start by believing city. And we encourage the people and organizations of Salt Lake City to provide support to survivors of rape and sexual assault. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tabitha Bell, um, Jane Doe One. Okay. Um, I'm Tabitha Bell, um, Jane Doe One, and I just want to thank, sorry, the legislature and um, Professor Cassell and all of his team for helping me um, get the justice I need. Um, last year was really hard for me uh, with um, having the district attorney tell me that he believed that my rape actually happened, but he did not want to prosecute because my attacker just went too fast to not notice. Um, and therefore, I lost my community at my school campus. I almost lost my high school diploma, meaning I would never have gotten to go to my dreams a college. And I was blessed to have a great support team in my family, but not every, not every victim gets a great family like I do. And I just wanna make sure with this bill that um, every victim can be believed and get the justice they deserve. Thank you. So I am reading this, oh sorry, I am reading this on behalf of Jane Doe 4, Crystal Medill. I regret that I am unable to make it here today to personally deliver my speech. I am honored to get this opportunity to connect with the community and to have my statement read by Alex, someone who puts so much effort into creating change for the better. I choose to be transparent as possible in my life. I feel if connection is not genuine, then there is no true connection made. Therefore, progress is not made. That is why we all stand here today to create progress towards a community that is more able to support those in need after such trials. I'm going out on a limb right here to share with you, at first I was hesitant about the passage of House Bill 281. As a survivor, having the experiences I have had, I can't help but question the intentions of everything at a much more intense level than I might have before. I almost did not report my sexual assault because I knew the process would be scary and difficult and I was very afraid to make it a part of my life. The truth was, my perpetrator already made sexual assault a part of my life, and it was up to me to stand up for myself and fight for justice. I knew I was capable of suppressing what had, done, had happened to me, but at what cost? I also understood that I wanted to be an example and contribute towards change, so I reported. And when I did, there, was a big, there felt like there was a big purpose for me reporting that this wasn't just about me. In many cases where the assault did not seem violent because of counterintuitive behavior and trauma responses that are associated with sexual assault, it is those specific actions that I have found society chooses to judge whether or not a victim is deserving of any justice. The internal damage is not considered strongly enough in our society. That must change. The very hard part for myself was having to fight so hard to have my situation heard and supported by our surrounding community and justice system. I was a lucky one, though, because I had the support of our local police department, showing me support and validation from the beginning of my case. I don't feel I should have to consider that lucky. I support House Bill 281 because I am willing to support the efforts of every entity in our community coming together towards progress. My favorite two parts of House Bill 281 is first that each, that each case more easily be, will be looked over, 
not only by district or county attorney's office, but by the attorney general's office. Secondly, that they will have, that there is also someone with training who will be looking at these cases. A member of Salt Lake City Police Department once shared with me how much they felt they had grown with proper training towards trauma over the last 10 years. I believe it is time to educate and train our justice system and the rest of our community at the same level. I hope to see others' willingness to address the ugly truths about the effects of sexual assault and what it has on the survivor and the community as a whole. Each individual who is victimized and their loved ones also are affected. I acknowledge that it is uncomfortable to even think about for most of us, but sexual assault is a reality. It is time for all of us to stand up and sit outside our comfort zones with survivors and give them a chance to exercise their right to fight for justice, providing them with a safe, supportive environment to do so. My hopes are that one day we will have a community that addresses such obstacles with more courage, healthy acceptance, and more passion from the community. That we will create a society that makes potential offenders think twice about their actions and creates a safe place for them to receive help before offending. To create a safe place where those who have been victimized can feel that they can safely report. To empower victims not only to survive their trauma, but to choose to live their life again and empower themselves. It takes every part of our community to work together towards this kind of change, especially those who are not in, the, in any official role of leadership. I want to thank my friends, family, and loved ones, the Utah Crime Victims Legal Clinic, the Rape Recovery Center, Wasatch Forensic Nurses, and the local media. Pacif specifically, I want to thank Paul Cassell, Bethany War, and Alex Merritt. Finally, a special thanks to Salt Lake City Police Department, and specifically De Detective Jeff Mott, who has always believed me. I wanted to lastly thank the, DA, the local DA and Attorney General's offices for choosing to take the next step towards progress. I'm looking forward to seeing the progress, progressive change we can create together. Thank you to every single one of you who has taken the time to listen to my speech. And to someone who is a part of this community, it means a lot to me. Thank you. Crystal Medill, Jane Doe 4. My name is Reed Richards, and I'm here representing a unique coalition between the Attorney General's Office, the local county and district attorneys, uh, and the Utah Council on Crime Victims. Uh, together, they worked with Representative Lisenby to put together uh, the wording of House Bill 281. That House Bill authorizes the Attorney General's Office to take a second look at cases that have been presented to a county or district attorney and have been denied for prosecution. So it allows a crime victim to look first to the county or district attorney for help in prosecuting his or her case. Uh, and then, if it uh, is a serious uh, first-degree felony, as most sexual violations are, it provides an opportunity for that individual, if the case is turned down by the local city or, or district or county attorney, to go to the, to the Attorney General's office and have the Attorney General's office look at the case as if it were a new case, giving no deference to the decisions made before, and make a second determination as to whether that case deserves prosecution. Uh, this, I, prov I think, provides a wonderful ride to our crime victims in the state of Utah to not only have it looked at by a very capable and competent city or county or district attorney, but then if they don't agree with the decision to then go to the Attorney General's office and have it screened and looked at by a, a competent, significant, and able uh, Attorney General deputy who then can move forward for the, with the investigation and prosecution of the case. A wonderful step forward in the Utah legal system. Hi, I'm Professor Paul Cassell from the S.J. Quinney College of Law up at the University of Utah. And as many of you know, in the middle of October, on behalf of four Jane Doe's, I filed a petition in the Utah Supreme Court asking it to use its constitutional power to appoint a prosecutor to investigate those cases. I was pleased to be joined by a very capable legal team, including uh, Bethany Ward from the Utah Crime Victims Legal Clinic, uh, Meg Garvin from the National Crime Victim Law Institute, uh, and local attorney Greg Fairbrush. 
Uh, after we filed that petition, it seemed that uh, people started to believe sexual assault victims more, uh, more uh, earnestly. And indeed, I, we were pleased, the four Jane Doe's who I had the honor of representing, to see the Utah legislature take up their case and to pass a bill that will now provide an opportunity for victims of serious sexual violence to have a decision by a local prosecutor not to file charges reviewed by the Utah Attorney General's office. And so I can report that within the last hour, uh, we have filed in the Utah Supreme Court a notice of withdrawal of our petition, our 150-page petition seeking appointment of a prosecutor from the Utah Supreme Court has been withdrawn in favor of sending the same information to our Utah Attorney General's office who will now review the case. And so we look forward to a careful scrutiny of each of the cases from the four Jane Doe's and we're optimistic that justice will follow in the near future. And I think uh, Ms. Nestel is going to say a few words uh, on behalf of the Utah Crime Victims Legal Clinic. Hello, I'm Heidi Nestel from the Utah Crime Victims Legal Clinic. We provide free legal services to crime victims as they go through the very difficult and sometimes overwhelming criminal justice process. In 1987, Utah was one of the first states in the nation to pass a Bill of Rights for Victims. In that Bill of Rights, the legislature declared that the rights of victims should be pursued as vigorously as rights of defendants. In 1994, the state of Utah, the people of Utah, voted to change Utah's constitution to afford rights to all crime victims. As important as these moments have been, and a great start in Utah, our laws continue to evolve and improve for crime victims. Today, and this moment, is a very important step in that journey and that process. We need to continually strive and champion for the rights of victims so that they can be treated with dignity, so that they can be provided information and notification about what's happening in their case, and most importantly, so that they feel invited and have a place at the table to participate. We think that all of these developments, the Start by Believing campaign, the petition that these brave Jane Doe's um, Tabitha and Crystal, who have presented today, as well as our other two clients, have had the courage to come forward to make these important changes, and we appreciate the legislature, headed by Representative Lisenby, to recognize the importance of victims to have as many opportunities to have their story heard and have their case believed. Thank you.